Hi, I'm Marty Atkins, president of CAF. Thanks for watching this online production of A Mystery to Me. Green screen technology, hundreds of hours of work, have made it possible to bring this show to you while keeping everyone safe. And you can watch it anywhere, even out here. If you've enjoyed this show, please consider making an online donation to the address shown below. KX expenses haven't stopped during the pandemic. We appreciate your financial support. And tell your friends. We'll keep this show available on our website for a time so others can see it too. Thanks again for joining us. We hope to see you in person soon. Welcome back, fellow sleuths. For five episodes, we followed Sam and Mara, and now we will finally discover the true identity of the minor manor murders. Is it the oblivious lawyer? Perhaps the abusive husband trying to cash out before his wife comes to her senses and leaves him. Have you figured it out yet? Prepare yourself because the answer may surprise you. I took the liberty of coating the mouthpiece of the blowgun with the Major's muscle relaxant, the one that numbs completely. Makes it hard to say you're innocent, doesn't it, Miss Wright? Ridiculous. I'm completely innocent. You planned for years to kill the Major. You blamed him for your father's death. You never believed that fire was an accident. What fire? I, I don't remember any fire. You don't remember your own name. It's okay, pal. Vern doesn't remember the Alamo, and the Hunchback of Notre Dame doesn't ring a bell. The right place used to be a quarter mile up the road, but it burned down under mysterious circumstances. You could hear old man right shriek. Yes, yes. Moving right along. Stop right there. I will kill you all with this. Everybody stand back. It should have been an equal part. My father invented the magic eight ball. He wrote the answers and never got credit. Your father wrote the magic eight ball answers? You know, it is certain. Reply hazy. Try again. Signs point to no. Ask again later. Outlook good. That was his prose. My father was a genius. You have to give yourself up. But signs point to no. You intend to kill us all? It is certain. Wait, you've been trying to decipher the clues for the Major's greatest treasure, haven't you? Reply hazy. Before you kill us, I can tell you where the treasure's hidden. You think you know where it is? Outlook good. No tricks. I know what the treasure is and where you can find it. Don't tell her. She's going to kill us anyway. The second clue. Less than 40 paces take a hard look beyond the trees. It's not on the grounds. It's on the bookcase. See the DVDs just after the Hitchcock film, The 39 Steps. It's the movie, The Petrified Forest. Get it? Less than 40 paces, The 39 Steps. Take a hard look beyond the trees. Look behind the box for The Petrified Forest. It's a Humphrey Bogart film. Why did you tell her? <laughs> it's here. It's really here. Open it have to thank you, Mr. Van Bogart. Of course, I have to kill you, but I do thank you. You're a clever man. Good show. Amazing piece of deduction. Honey, you knew the treasure was nothing but a novelty gag, didn't you? I did. But how? The first clue. What do most sitcoms have in common? Don Rickles? Time nuts? <laughs> A laugh track. Don't you see? When James told me that the Major's estate included the contents of his safety deposit box, 
I wondered why he'd leave a valuable gem like the eye of the idol of the hysterical monkey just lying around. But the first clue told me what his most valuable treasure was, not the gem. A laugh track? I don't get it. What's another name for a laugh track? Oh, I know. Cam's laughter. <laughs> Thank heavens. The case is solved. Not quite. What do you mean? I mean Henrietta Wright murdered the Major, but her accomplice killed Paul. <gasps> you see, we all thought that Paul Butler the Baker was telling us who didn't kill him, when he was actually telling us who the killer isn't, thereby telling us who the killer actually is. What the heck are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is the killer killed Paul because somehow Paul figured out who the killer actually isn't. So now I know who the killer isn't. I'm definitely putting my headphones back on. What I'm trying to say is someone here isn't who we think he is. Paul is telling us that the killer isn't Thomas because you're not Thomas. Are you Thomas? I'm talking to you, Thomas Paul. Or should I say... Otto Overmeyer. Who? Otto Overmeyer hid in the foyer behind the bubbler and ambushed Paul before he could share vital information that would expose Overmeyer's complicity. There's no bubbler in the foyer. That's right. There is no bubbler in the foyer. What the heck is a bubbler? Only Otto Overmeyer of Egg Harbor, Wisconsin would know that there is no bubbler. What is a bubbler? People in Wisconsin call drinking fountains bubblers. Nineteen years ago, Howard worked in the Congo with fellow Peace Corps volunteer Otto Overmeyer, a poetry major and orphan. So there was no rope bridge and no monkey? Oh, Thomas, or should I say Otto, crossed that bridge when he came to it, but he didn't survive that coconut. Strangely, all records of Otto Overmeyer stopped nineteen years ago. No? You only pretended to have amnesia so none of the heirs could ask you a question that you couldn't answer, thereby revealing your sinister deception. Uh, all right. Uh, I admit it. Uh, I took his place. I hated the jungle. The natives ridiculed my poetry readings. They had no respect for iambic pentameter. All they cared about was not starving. I knew no one would know after 19 years would recognize me. No one would recognize you? Not the Major who you presume dead. Not your relatives that were only children when you left for the Congo. Not the Butler. But Paul is dead. Not Paul Butler. THE Butler. The family Butler for over 40 years. But sir, I, I had no idea. That Rolex on your wrist is no knockoff. The only way that you could afford that on a Butler salary is by blackmail. Alright, alright. I'll admit it. I saw no harm in substituting an heir. After all, I am an orphan on my mother's side. Very clever, Mr. Van Bogart, but won't do you any good. I'll kill you all and I'll blame it on the escaped lunatic. I'll say I had to shoot the escapee in self-defense. <laughs> Not so fast, Otto or Thomas or whoever you are. Drop your gun. But we put blank shells in that shotgun. The killer didn't know that. He does now, feather brain. Why did you put blanks in the shotgun? Because we thought Miss Forrest was crazy. You're crazy. Where'd you get that gun, Thomas? What difference does it make? I found it in the Major's room when I was looking for the treasure. Oh, that's the Major's gun? Well, in that case, go ahead. Shoot me. Don't think I won't. Stop right there. I, I mean it, I'll shoot. You asked for it. Bang? Congratulations, Sam. You solved both murders. Now we're all safe, and we can rest easy. Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. This is getting monogamous. Magnanimous. <laughs> you mean monotonous. What could possibly be left to solve? 
Of course, we're forgetting. We need to find an escaped mental patient. That won't be necessary. Will it, Miss Forrest? Not necessary? Are you insane? No, but you are. Aren't you, Miss Forrest? What is he talking about? I knew there was something about your walk that I didn't like from the start. You're no posture pal yourself. Then it dawned on me. Your shoes. They're too small. So? Miss Forrest is no asylum guard. She's the escaped patient. <gasps> Mara gave me the final clue. The escaped patient couldn't be seen wearing the standard issue asylum slippers. So she had to attack a guard and borrow a jacket and shoes. You are very clever, Mr. Van Bogart. You are quite correct. I, it was craft day. I managed to escape my fourth floor room by constructing a ladder out of dried macaroni, pipe cleaners, and lots and lots of Elmer's glue. She's going to murder us all with her bare hands. I'm not here to kill any of you. I'm here to assassinate Chester Arthur. The 21st president of the United States? He died in 1886. Good memory, Benanisiac. You know what drove me insane? The metric system. I said the Affordable Health Care Act was brilliant. They called me mad and locked me up. Now, now, just take it easy. You people have nothing to fear. I want to thank each of you. Before I met you, I thought the grass was greener outside the asylum, but I was wrong. Now, after working with you people, I want to go back. Lock me up, please. Well done, Sam. Honey, I'm so proud of you. Gotta hand it to you, Sam. You were the right man, the right place at the right time. No, sir. The right place used to be a quarter mile up the road. Oh, God, please stop. Our worries are over. Sam solved everything. Except when the rain will stop so we can get out of here. A warm front having pushed up from the Gulf has been trapped between cold air masses, moving down from the northwest and another pushing down from Maine. The warm air mass is trapped, occluded, and pushed upwards. Results in heavy rains are expected for the next 10 to 12 hours. This will be followed by three to four hours of heavy and foreboding fog. If you're listening to this song, then please know that you have come to a house where not all here will leave alive. This must come as quite a shock, but be brave, pull up your socks, and have some fun. This isn't such a dive. Oh, murder and mayhem. Sam and Mara. Until next time. This has been a mystery to me. I'm done. Get me.